Hi guys, I'm back with another soap and I just made the last soap I did. The coffee soap was the first uh, soap that I filmed. I just did that the other day and I haven't even looked at the footage so hopefully the angle and the lighting is okay. So I don't even know if I can use any of that footage. Um, I had a little trouble with that soap so I don't exactly know if I'll be able to use it. I'm going to go ahead and make a second soap. And hopefully I can use some of this footage. <laughs> so I'm going to use the same recipe that I used before. I really liked it. Um, it had the tallow in it, so it turned out a really nice, rich, creamy, um, opaque color. I just liked the way that it turned out. It did have those little spots, but... Other than that, I really liked how it turned out, and I think I think that was probably just my error um, in mixing or something. My stick blender actually died on me, so that might have had something to do with it. All right, let me get my safety equipment. I'll be right back. All right, so I need 130 grams of lye. And so I got a new stick blender. I actually got it at Ross. So it's a Cuisinart, but I don't know if I like it all that much. Um, I wanted one that the base can come off of the motor part. And well, I saw the name Cuisinart and I thought it would be quality. I'm not exactly sure. So I thought I would do a batch of soap with it and see how I like it. That way I can return it sooner than later if it's not what I want. We're almost there. Okay. Go ahead and stir this. And I use these disposable spoons and um, sometimes the Lye water gets so hot that it melts them. I'm just trying to do it a little bit at a time. Okay. Alright, so I'll go ahead and let that lye water cool and I'll go ahead and measure out my oils. And it seems every time I want to make soap, it's chilly outside. Um, but today it's actually warm enough outside that I put my solid oils outside to sort of melt. But then I brought them inside and then I didn't get to soaping right away, so they're back to being solid. Mostly solid coconut oil. Hello is still pourable. 453 grams. So next is olive oil, 226 grams. So I microwaved this. I don't know if these big jugs are microwave safe, but I microwaved it for like 20 seconds. Just enough to get it pourable. So 226 grams of this one.
All right, right on the money. And the tallow and the coconut oil is still not completely liquidy. So I think I'm gonna microwave this. I don't know if this is microwave safe, but I'm gonna microwave it for like 10 seconds. I'll be right back. Okay, so I don't know if that did any good, but I did it. <laughs> So let me get my new stick blender out and I'll show you. It's this Cuisinart one and it's one piece so this doesn't come off, which is kind of a bummer. Um, and it, this seems kind of short, so that's why I'm not exactly sure how well I'm going to like it. Um, but we'll give it a try. I got it at Ross. There's the box. $23. There's cheaper stick blenders on Amazon, but they generally have really terrible reviews. The review for this on Amazon wasn't that great either, but I had seen them there, so I figured I would go back and pick one up. Alright, so I'll go ahead and mix my oils. So this has a low and a high, and that low is really low. The high is not even that high, so. And the thing, um, like if you're using this for smoothies or something, the blade's not even sharpened, so it's just stirring, which is fine, I guess, for soap making. All right, so my oils are combined, and my lye water is dissolved. I'm going to go ahead and combine these. Yeah, this is just a two pound batch and it's like almost to the top of this metal shaft. So I'm not sure if I'm happy with that. Um, I don't anticipate making larger than two pound batches anytime soon, but I'd like a little bit more space there. Let's see how this comes together. When I made it last time, I used coffee ice cubes, so the lye water was not as hot as it usually is. I don't know if that has something to do with it, but it took forever to trace. I had read that using tallow makes it trace really quickly. And I don't have any spare colorants to use, so I thought I would try sort of a natural color. So I think I'm going to use some cocoa powder. Just um, maybe like the regular soap color and then color part of it with cocoa powder and do some sort of really simple swirl. I also don't like these sort of vents are creating like suction and it's kind of moving my stick blender in a way that I'm not really wanting it to. And yeah, I don't, I like the ones that come apart in two pieces, so I could just leave the shaft in the soap without having this big top-heavy motor part. <sighs> yeah, I think I'm going to take it back and just um, get like a KitchenAid. I think the KitchenAids are around $30 on Amazon, so save my $23. Just apply it towards a, a KitchenAid. I'm going to go ahead and... Divide my soap in half and color one half of it. I was looking online for maybe using some kind of colorant that I have on hand. Something in my kitchen. I was thinking maybe turmeric or something. Um, I had made a soap with red palm oil. So I do have sort of an orangey soap, so I didn't want to do turmeric. But I think I'll try the cocoa sort of paranoid about dipping into my baking cocoa with my hands all potentially with lye on them. So I just do this. So let me start with about a teaspoon. Put that in and see what it looks like. 
It's actually made a nice color. It'll be a nice contrast with the regular soap. Might add just a little bit more. And now I'm thinking about it, I should have put some cocoa in that coffee soap and made sort of a mocha. Would have made a nicer color and given a little bit of a chocolate coffee flavor. I'll go ahead and put a full second teaspoon in. So yeah, that's a really nice dark color. You see? side for now. And then I guess I'll just keep blending these until I get some semblance of trace so that I can swirl these together. I want them to be thick enough that they don't just mix together. Um, but I'll do that off camera and I'll be right back. Alright, so that was about another five minutes of pulsing and stirring and starting to lay on the surface. And it seems like it just doesn't want to trace and doesn't want to trace and then all of a sudden it starts to trace. So you really do have to watch it. Um, so it's still a light trace, but it's actually doing something which is good. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to work on this one because this is still not trace. And I didn't add any fragrance oil. I had pulled some out. Um, it was a mango and then I was going to add some mandarin orange but I, I think with the cocoa it kind of smells like chocolate so I could do the orange and do orange and chocolate but I think I'm just going to not use fragrance oil and just either have an unscented bar or have it have a light cocoa chocolate scent this is coming to sort of a light trace a lot quicker or with a lot less um, mixing. So I don't know, maybe it just needs to get to a certain temperature and it feels a lot warmer than the one I made last time since I made the ice cubes, the coffee ice cubes, so maybe it just needs to hit a certain temperature to trace. But these are both at a light trace, so I'm going to blend just a little bit more. It's more of a spoonable consistency. Alright, so I have reached sort of a pudding consistency. I have my vanilla pudding and my chocolate pudding. And I don't exactly know how I'm going to do this. I think I'll just do some blobs. And then put the chocolate right on top to kind of press the white out. Oh, I hope you can see. So I'm just pouring right where I just poured. And then we'll do it again. trying to do this from sort of a height so that it goes down into the mold instead of just laying on top. Okay. I'll just leave the scrapings for the top. Scrape this all onto the top. Sort of try to lay it on the top so it doesn't break through, it just lays on the top.
kind of smooth it over so there's mostly brown showing. And then the white. Need to get a better spatula too. This Dollar Tree one is just not cutting it for me. All right. So last time I did a swirl, I used a bamboo skewer, which is pretty thin, and I feel like it didn't catch enough to actually do a swirl. I'm going to see if I can find something a little thicker. Alright, so this is what I came up with. It's a plastic fork. And I'm just going to... How do I want to do this? I think I want to do long swirls like this. And... We'll see... If I mix it up too much, since the last time I was afraid of that and I didn't mix it up enough. And I sort of like the way the top is. I might just do a little bit more using the tine, since I'm using a fork. Why not? I think I liked it better before I started messing with it. Oh well. I tend to like the high contrast swoops. I just kind of mixed it all together, at least here on the surface. But that's alright. Alright, so the last ones I did with this recipe, I didn't insulate it or anything. Just left it uncovered overnight, and the next evening I unmolded it. So we'll check back tomorrow. I'll show you how this looks when I cut it. Hi guys, it's Katie, and it's uh, almost 24 hours since I made the cocoa swirl soap. And the darker colors have gotten lighter, but then the white colors have these very stark white streaks, at least on the top. So it's pretty interesting. Um, and I tried to unmold this really early. Like I knew it wasn't going to be ready. It was first thing this morning. And so it's kind of sticking on the sides. I'll see if I can get this out of the mold. The tallow recipes firm up really nicely. And they slice really easily. Um, but this one I'm having a little trouble getting out of the mold. Let's see if I can fold this back. There we go. Just needed to get started. Oh yeah, it's kind of soft on the underside still. It's probably not ready, but I oh, can't go back now. Okay. Ooh. Okay. So that went back to its appropriate shape. That was kind of sc <coughs> scary for a second. And it's like Play-Doh. So um, it's nice and firm all until this last layer. So, probably should have let it go a couple more hours, but... Alright, so, can you see the three dots that I started with, and the sides have some sort of swirling? So I'll go ahead and cut a sliver off. And... What's the matter? That's what the first piece looks like. And the cocoa soap is a little bit crumbly. We'll see how it turns out. What's wrong, honey? So the colors are pretty subtle. I mean, there's a contrast, so that's nice. 
and the cocoa in the inside didn't lighten as much as on the outside and I don't know I don't know if that will change as it cures it's a little bit darker right in the center I don't know if you can even see that on camera but I think that it gelled but I don't really care I'm still happy with it I was so happy with the co um, the coffee soap. The texture of the soap just looked awesome. But um, I don't know if it's because this one's really pretty. I don't know if it's because um, you know the smaller cupcake size cavities if they didn't get as hot. That one's very cool. I don't know if it's showing up on the camera as well as it is in real life. I don't know if you can see that darker center either. And it's a little crumblier than I would like, but Ooh, that's going to be a thick slice. Whoopsie. <laughs> is that one? That's very cool. It's got You can see the layers as I poured them in. That's um I was like right near the edge. So the slices that are near the middle of those dots that I, the three dots, the center is a little bit more uniform and then closer to the edge of those dots or the borders of those dots is where it gets a little bit interesting. You can see all the layers. <laughs> and it kind of smells like cocoa. I don't know if I would guess cocoa if I didn't know there was cocoa in it, but it's kind of cool that there's cocoa in it too. Just from a novelty standpoint, you can really see how it's darker on this bar. But we'll see how it turns out once it's cured. Ah, ah. Oh. My little one is obsessed with my tripod, which makes filming when she's awake difficult. That one's also very cool. And I think I'll just cut the little sliver off the back end. This is the back side. That's pretty cool. So I don't know if they'll eventually look these shades, but on the inside it's still a really cocoa-y color. This one's very cool. Let's see this last slice. Oh yeah, that might be my favorite. Isn't it funny when the last slice is your favorite? I like that. Alright, so that is my Coco Swirl Tallow Soap. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.